process-based perspectives are concerned with how motivation occurs, rather than attempting to identify specific motivational stimuli such as pay or recognition, process perspectives focus on why people choose certain behavioral options to satisfy their needs and how they evaluate their satisfaction after they've attained those goals. Let's take a look at the expectancy theory of motivation. Expectancy theory suggests that people are motivated by how much they want something and the likelihood they perceive of getting it. Expectancy theory is a more encompassing model of motivation than equity theory. Over the years since its original formulation, the theory's scope and complexity have continued to grow. Victor Vram is generally credited with first applying the theory of motivation to the workplace. The theory attempts to determine how individuals choose among alternative behaviors. The basic premise of expectancy theory is that motivation depends on how much we want something and how likely we are to get it. This figure summarizes the basic expectancy model. The model's general components are effort, the result of motivated behavior, performance, and outcomes. Expectancy theory emphasizes the linkages among these elements, which are described in terms of expectancies, instrumentalities, and valences. Effort to performance expectancy is a person's perception of the probability that effort will lead to successful performance. Performance to outcome instrumentality is a person's perception of the probability that performance will lead to certain other outcomes. An outcome is anything that might potentially result from performance. High performance conceivably might produce such outcomes as a pay raise, a promotion, recognition from the boss, fatigue, stress, less time to rest, among others. The valence of the outcome is the relative attractiveness or unattractiveness, the value of the outcome to the person. Pay raises, promotions, and recognition might all have positive valences, whereas fatigue, stress, and less time and rest might have negative valence. The strength of outcome valences varies from person to person. Work-related stress may be a significant negative factor for one person, but only a slight annoyance to another. The basic expectancy framework suggests that three conditions must be met before motivated behavior occurs. First, the effort to performance expectancy must be well above zero. That is, the worker must reasonably expect that exerting effort will produce high levels of performance. Second, the performance to outcome instrumentalities must be well above zero. In other words, the person must believe that performance will realistically result in valued outcomes. Third, the sum of all the valiances for the potential outcomes relevant to the person must be positive. One or more valiances may be negative as long as the positives outweigh the negatives. Expectancy theory is so complicated that researchers have found it to be quite difficult to test. In particular, the measures of various paths of the model may lack validity, and the procedures for investigating relationships among the variables have been less scientific than researchers would like. Moreover, people are seldom as rational and objective in choosing behaviors as expectancy theory implies. Still, the logic of the model, combined with the consistent, albeit modest, research support for it, suggests that the theory has much to offer. Because expectancy theory is so complex, it's difficult to apply directly in the workplace. A manager would need to figure out what the rewards each employee wants and how valuable those rewards are to each person, measure the various expectancies, and finally adjust the relationships to create motivation.